You've seen her at Comedy Central. Please give it up for Mike Cannon. Wow. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Fran's gay ex-husband. <laughs> Feels good to be back in her good graces. <laughs> this is good. I'm actually somebody's husband. I just got married three weeks ago. Very excited. Thank you. Thank you, primarily female support. Thank you. Every woman was like, true love does exist. Not one man lifted their hand off their lap. I appreciate. Here's the thing, I understand statistically it was a terrible decision. But my girl's put in her time. She has her 10,000 hours. <laughs> it's true, we've been together for a very long time. We're both 31 years old. We've been dating since we were 10. I know, and in all fairness, oh, it's been on and off, so I have HPV and stuff, but seriously. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I've never been tested. But uh, <laughs> the whole lead up to the wedding was so brutal. Like there was so much planning that I took very little part in. But my girl had a full plate. She did everything too. She had like a bachelorette party, a bridal shower. She was throwing like 48 parades. <laughs> Just constant parties celebrating her ability to accept a gift. <laughs> That's all she did to become engaged. She stuck out her hand, received something shiny, then got whisked away on her princess tour. <laughs> yeah, while I'm stuck here trying to make a hundred strangers love me on a nightly basis. She went to Puerto Rico for her bachelorette party. Yeah, beautiful, lovely, thank you. I appreciate that. As co-owner of Puerto Rico, I thank you. She did something I thought was weird though, because she's never been before, so I figured an all-inclusive resort would be the safest bet to go do when you haven't you know, been to the place before. But instead, her and her friends just Airbnb'd a place. Yeah, I was like, what do you want to be in fucking Taken 19? Like, is that? because I don't have a particular set of skills. <laughs> yeah. If you get took, that shit's on you, boo-boo. <laughs> it's all I could think of the entire time she was gone, because I was on mushrooms that whole weekend. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, she's gonna get kidnapped and then sold into sex slavery. <laughs> right? But then I remembered she was 30, so there's no risk of that. <laughs> Not much of a market out there for a full-grown woman with a solidified opinion. <laughs> Too tough to trick. <laughs> we, went to, uh, we went to Bali for our honeymoon. We just got back, which was, yeah, it was awesome because I can't afford Baltimore. <laughs> My girl sold it to me in such a psychotic way, too, because I was unsure. It's, a whole, it's on the other side of the world. It's a completely different culture. I don't know about anything about it. So she's like, listen, it's gonna be the trip of a lifetime. The weather's incredible. The water, the, the food is amazing. But just a heads up, the water's like infested <laughs> with sharks. I was like, why the fuck would that be a part of your sales pitch? <laughs> As if you don't know that my biggest fear in the entire world is to be eaten by a shark. It is, which is a weird fear for me to have because I live in Brooklyn. <laughs> so I'm very rarely in the crosshairs of a shark. <laughs> Like, I have some city fears. My biggest New York City fear is definitely to be pushed in front of a subway, right? But I figured it out. It's because I spend the majority of my commute thinking about pushing people in front of a subway. <laughs> <laughs> Figure somebody else has to be thinking it too and have far more ambition than I. Second biggest New York City fear is that a pigeon flies in my mouth and gives me AIDS. <laughs> I didn't say it was gonna be reasonable. It's just something I think about. Anytime one of those poison devil birds comes flying in my face, I feel like it's gonna clip my lip and I'm gonna rapidly lose weight. Like that's... <laughs> Shark thing didn't even turn out to be true, which is actually a bummer. Cause I figured the be if I would, you know, being eaten by a shark on your honeymoon might be the best way to die. Right, because I wouldn't have to play the long game of marriage. I give her five days of my A game. 
Yeah. Then get ruthlessly murdered by a monster right in front of her. What man is ever gonna follow that? Right, it would have to be super dramatic too. I hope I'd be like reaching out of the water, trying to grab her hand to pull me back on the boat and a shark comes over and just lops me off at the wrist and she's left just juggling my hand. And puts it up on her mantle like a lucky monkey paw for every potential suitor to see. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to be eaten by a shark? You have, that's, not a ra that's, that's a rare answer to this question, I swear to God, because typically people don't think about it. And here's the thing, if you haven't, let me paint a picture for you. Just imagine being eaten by a lion. Now add drowning to that. <laughs> right, because at least the lion has the decency to give you one last gasp of God's great air. A shark is eating you alive, pulling you underwater while you also can't breathe. Which one do you even address first? Oh no, I'm being eaten, but also, hmm, hmm. <laughs> this is what I figured out though, more people, why more people don't share this fear with us. It's because human beings are literally the only animal that are cocky enough to think they know how to take down a shark. <laughs> right, how do you stop a shark, what do you do? Exactly, what, just punch it in the nose. That's all you gotta do, just punch it. Just punch this giant fucking monster traveling 35 miles per hour at your mouth agape. Just what? Just punch it right in the... Just punch, why don't you punch a fucking Ford Taurus? See how much that slows it down. And all of a sudden, everybody is the most precision puncher of all time. Never thrown a punch on dry land. Now you're in the water. This killing machine's natural habitat. Your tooties aren't even hitting the floor. This thing is knifing through the waves, mouth open, rows of razor sharp fangs, and you're just like. <laughs> right, it's not even a full punch either, it's an under the water pussy punch. <laughs> Can't even get your full body behind it. What do you think that punch is gonna do? You think you're gonna hit the shark, it's just gonna turn over and then float to the top of the ocean? <laughs> then you just Tupac walk your way out of the water. I, I figured this room was too white to get that reference, but that's okay. <laughs> America's Most Wanted, hell of a music vid. I wanted to do mushrooms in Bali, but I found out that the penalty for drugs was death by firing squad. So I decided just gun muzzles might not be the best thing to see while you're just on mushrooms. <laughs> Plus, I think the last time I did mushrooms might be the last time I ever do them. Like, it's my favorite drug in the entire world, but the last time was an intense moment. It was actually with two of my best friends, their long-term serious girlfriends, and one of my buddies, Tim, goes, all right, my frat brother Ken's coming. He's a wild card. <laughs> yeah, literally the last thing you want to hear when you're about to open your soul to the universe, right? <laughs> hey, by the way, somebody's coming that you've never met before, and he's capable of anything. <laughs> well, all right, bring him in, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> This kid shows up, right? We start parceling out all the mushrooms. He goes, all right, I want to scare myself to death. <laughs> Grabs six grams, sticks them in his face. Yeah, which for those of you who don't know, six grams is basically, basically the amount you want to take if you want to look God directly in the eyes. <laughs> it's an intense amount, right? So we all eat a normal amount of mushrooms. This kid takes a heroic dose. Which, by the way, this is my favorite part of mushrooms, too. My favorite part isn't even the trip. My favorite part is the moment of panic that happens right after you initially eat them. Do you know what I mean? Where you eat them and you're just like, yep, this is gonna happen now, whether I want it to or not. <laughs> oh, all right, it's like strapping yourself into a roller coaster. You feel the first clicks up the hill and you're like, I can't get out of this even if I wanted to now. <laughs> this is absolutely happening. So the kid takes six grams. This was his reaction for four hours. He just screamed at the top of his lungs. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I know you guys are normal people, so you probably think that means he screamed, then like took a break, and then re-screamed. <laughs> Nay, not on this night. <laughs> For four hours, this kid was just <laughs> He took his shirt off, he started like ape hitting himself. <laughs> he was saying super profound things like you couldn't if you can't, so you won't. Like that's <laughs> 
it got to the point where he was flailing so violently that we had to stick him inside. And my buddy's entire front of his house is made of glass. So we're basically watching a zoo exhibit of a crazy person. <laughs> just melting down, just yelling, hitting, going, you are what you eat unless it's your feet. Like that's... <laughs> for four hours. Finally, after four hours, this kid kind of like gathered himself, walked towards the door, figured out how the knob worked, <laughs> opened up the door, came outside, looked at me, goes, <laughs> lit up a cigarette and goes, I think the mushrooms just kicked in. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. I'm Mike Cannon, appreciate it.